What an absolutely fantastic album. I've had a chance to sit down and listen to it, and it's an absolutely amazing album. Appreciate it, brother. So, Kevin, tell us a little bit about how you became involved with the band, because I know the first album was an instrumental. So how did you get involved with the band, and what was your response when you first got asked to, to try out for the band, I guess? Yeah, and it was it was definitely an experience. I was uh, I shortly was uh, a free agent after leaving Suffocation. I left them in you know uh, end of 2017. I remember just being on my computer. I was working a shit job, and I was uh, just sitting there on Facebook pretending to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a message from a guy named Wes Hauk, and you know what? I'll be honest. We we didn't know of each other. Uh, I've heard of the bands he was affiliated with, but we we didn't know each other personally. He reached out to me through uh, telling me that a mutual friend had given him my information, letting him know that I had just left Suffocation. And you know, Wes has seen. He hasn't seen me live, but he saw videos, and he was you know very much a, you know fond of the performances. So he just shot me a message, shot in the dark. And uh, I read it, I checked it out, and I remember working at that job, and I was on my phone, and I had, I always had my, like, headphones, my Apple AirPods in, yeah. and um, I, pre- I pretended to use the restroom so I can go and listen to the song. So I remember standing in this job, I hated this job, I was putting up pictures of fire hydrants on a website so that companies can buy shit, it was awful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember I was on the f- I was on my phone checking it out, and he sent me the first album just on Spotify to check it out. And uh, my first, if I had to, I- I'm I'm kind of a very critical, judgmental guy when it comes to listening to bands. And I heard the first few licks, and I was like, oh, okay, so it's like a prog band, like it's going to be all tech. And then the song took turn, it gets chunky, it gets groovy, it gets kind of like r- really riffy and slammy, and I was like, okay, 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 this is heavy, and it's talented, and it's techni- uh, technical, and uh, yeah, and that started, and then I ended up listening to the whole album in the bathroom, and I became obsessed with it, I wrote him right back, and we were in contact for about a year or so, and then and after that, then we really got into sending each other demos, and then I flew out there, and we tracked it, and it was best friends ever since dude it's it's been such an honor we assembled such a strong team and we're, we're just always communicating almost everyone it's super positive dude it's awesome awesome so tell us a little bit about the songwriting process for this album did wes do most of the songwriting or were you able to contribute a fair bit to that as well I think it was more, Wes did do a large majority of the writing, almost, almost all of it. It was, it was in the sense of like, I with patterns and, you know, just ideas in the studio. But I, I mean, this album was really, in my perspective, Wes letting out a lot of, I guess, stories off his chest. And I think people translate better through music than sometimes just communication. And I think this album speaks not only from his point of view, but he, he wanted to speak in other people's point of views that have gone through things that he's gone through. And then kind of looking at all of us as a group, there's a lot that we relate to the songs as well. Like we're almost, we look at each other as like damaged goods <laughs> yeah. that have like made it into a group that all like respects each other. And I, I think it's, uh, we were talking about how, like, like I made a reference, I think, one saying, like, we're the, the land of misfit toys, you know, but, like, we're here together, and it's been nothing but strong glue, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're crushing right now, and it feels great, and we got a lot of things upcoming, you know, tour, tours, we're trying to get going, the album's cruising right now, the song hype is great, and just people like you guys calling me and asking me about it is all just perfect signs of a good time. Definitely. Some of the tracks, like Ulysses, have got such uh, meaningful lyrics, but also such personal lyrics for Wes. What was that like for you, um, sitting down and reading those lyrics for the first time, knowing that you were the person that was going to have to sing them? I felt honored, honestly. It was very... Uh, I, think, I think that's what I was saying before, in the sense of, like, he would always ask me, like, hey, you want to, like, write a part for this and write a part for that? I was like... Honestly, I don't want to muddy this up at all. I feel like if this song is so, like, you know, the, you know Ulysses was big about, like, the, the military, and then there's songs about just relationships, and I was just kind of like, I'm not going to be in there and saying, like, yeah, kill everybody, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw on some, you know, generic stuff, and, like, I, I don't have the same angle to give this any sort of light. So I was just, you know what, let's let it rock the way it is, and, 
you know, I, I let's let's let this be like a closed book. Like once this album's released, it's you know you got that off your chest. Now let's move forward. Let's let's then we can write together. We'll sit in a room for a week and just jam and get ideas out. And I think this album is so good because for us in the sense of you know in terms of the writing and the not only lyrics but the patterns and the types of styles we tried to incorporate on this. It's it's like we tried okay so what we're able to do so that way the next album is not a surprise to you yeah you know it'd be like if, if i did all the vocals on this one and the next album west decides to sing it's going to be different you know where we kind of everybody involved in everything and now the the road is such an open wide road for the next release exactly tell us a little bit about some of those styles that you tried with this album as well like did you guys kind of go into this with an idea of how you wanted this album to sound uh, I think it, it, it's, it, you know, me and Wes are fairly, like, simple-minded people in the sense of what we want to hear. Like, we just want it to be pissed, man. Like, I want to I wanna be on a record that is mean. Like, uh, like I, in no means would I have joined a band where I would have had to change my style completely. You know what I mean? The fact yeah. that, like, songs like Sarcoma... It's just a groovy mosh song, dude. Like, people, I just want people to fight to it. Um, I think that's, for me, my driving force of how to keep these styles alive. But I think even songs like 40, how there's a lot of technical, a lot of, like, beauty in the riffs. It's very jazz-feely. It's very um, all over the place. But, look, we come from all different influences. Like, on my time off, I'm listening to, like, depressed lo-fi and, like, jazz and some hip-hop even. So it's just, like... Finally, I'm in a band that can express from all different routes. It's not just a prog band. We're not just a, you know, metal deathcore band or me- death metal band, whatever you want to put us. Like, that's one of my favorite things watching right now is like watching people review the album and they struggle to tell us what genre it is. Yeah, yeah. And as long as we can keep that forever, I will be so stoked. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was actually laughing about that because a lot of the ways here in Australia in music stores that they put metal out onto the shelves is into genres of metal so you'll have like your new metal section your thrash metal section and i actually laugh whenever an album comes out that's like yours because i imagine the person in the store sitting there listening to it going where the hell do i put this like (laughs) (laughs) exactly dude and that and that brings me just pure joy it's like all right tell us what is it (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, the the album also takes a look at human hardship and um, how we're all in this together, basically. And I think that's going to speak to a lot of people at the moment because of what we've all been through over the last 12 months. I mean, even our state slogan oh, yeah. at the moment is we're all in this together. Um, uh, is that something that you guys are aware of with this album, how much it's going to speak to people at the moment? I mean, we're hoping, you know, I think right now is uh, such a sensitive time to be alive. You know what I mean? It's like everybody's worried about the wrong shit or you have the other half that's worried about all the right shit, but they're being ignored. Yep. Um, I think the difference with this album and these songs, like we don't really speak too much about like, I guess, the world's... uh, system in terms of like you know weather and like we're not talking about like global warming and shit but we're talking about like the problems that we create that we could be fixing like uh the song anodyne is pretty much just about how you know the medical industry here has turned into its own like drug cartel yeah you know like there's behind every subscription uh behind every prescription drug is uh, a team of wealthy men making sure you stay addicted to it yeah um and the fact that that's like a known thing and everybody just turns a blind eye to it, it's just like, what the hell is happening right now? Yeah. Um, songs like Exponent, the whole song is about, you know, AI kind of like analyzing us throughout these last, how long have we had the internet? 20, 30 years now? Yeah. You know, like, like where we're asking Jeeves for help and AOL and Google, it's like, we, like, they have all the answers, and they know us better than we do, you know? And it's like, if that's a server that became, you know, uh, cognizant of its uh, 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 its own being, it's like, dude, the first thing it would do is remove us. First thing. Yep, yep. And I think this song is a really cool idea of, like, having that point of view of, like, we studied you, we know you're the enemy, and we know we gotta take care of you. But, like, 
that's stuff we created that we can fix, but we choose not to. Yeah, I think people are becoming more aware of these things as well. Like we're just noticing a time here in Australia where with the vaccination rollout, Australians became very, very aware early on that our government had got us the worst vaccination simply because the government signed a deal with a pharmaceutical company. And it's been amazing to watch here because it's something with the pharmaceutical companies a lot of people have known for a long time, but just turned a blind eye to. But suddenly with the COVID vaccinations, they've become aware of it. So do you think that is going to help people to embrace the kind of message that you're getting out there now because more people have become aware of things like that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the message is great and all, but it's just the movement is the issue. And yep. I think it's uh, it, it's it's the louder a message you make like that, the more people catch on and, like, wake up of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's it, it, again, the battle we face is not always us versus the big teams. It's us versus each other. Like, look at, look at how social media is now. Like, you, you can't have an opinion unless you pick a side. Yeah. You know, nowadays yeah. it's not like pe- even people that are for people first, they're just like literally giving you a blunt fact of like, hey, if we do this, this is better for all of us. And then there's always someone that's on the opposite of that. And it's like, you know, whether it's it, it, I can go on for this for hours, but it's just it's. Yeah, I hope I hope that people grow from this. And I if our album does any sort of signif- significance in someone's life, whether it's just for themselves or for a movement. Great. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. For someone like yourself who's who's in the public eye, does that make social media like a real minefield? Because I know for myself now, I don't share any personal opinions on my page because of um, the trouble that it can cause at the radio station and stuff like that. Is that something that you're really aware of now as well, where you're really careful not to put personal things up online and things like that? I'll tell you, I really don't have too many, like edgy opinions you know what i mean i just i just know that like for me yeah uh, maybe there are some i don't know i'm just very much like yeah everybody should be have access to water everybody should (laughs) yeah little things like that i'm not so much like you know i i think just like the it's hard it's hard to pick a side because i think just the the worst thing in in this country at least is our news our news is so one-sided and whether it's a good side or a bad side they don't they don't rationalize anything they don't tell you just what's happening they tell you like they'll show you three minutes of a clip and then they hire five analysts to come and give their opinion it's like no one asked for these people yeah like we don't want to hear them we want to keep the camera on what's happening i want to see it for myself and we we as a, a a whole people will see what's right or wrong you see some kid getting mowed down on the street you're you're gonna have sudden feelings if you're human or not you know what i mean you're not gonna be told like oh some kid was going against the thing it's like no show me whether it's hard to watch i'm the guy on the internet looking for like that harsh footage yeah to see really what's happening you know and um a tagline is not gonna do it for me and that's where i think the news is can can blow it but um and it just sucks yeah there's other countries that are doing the news better i i would say you know and and then that leaks around the internet, but it sucks that that's how hard it is to get real information is trickling around the internet, you know? Yeah, I've noticed here, uh, I've no, for, for myself here, I used to sit down and watch the news every night for the hour that it was on, and now I will literally just listen to radio updates, because with radio updates, that's what you get. You get um, what the number of... Um, people who are infected here at the moment are what the death rate is and then that's it whereas with the news there's always the slant of um this has happened because this political party has done this or done that and it's like i don't need that making you pick sides (laughs) yeah yeah so it it, it becomes it it becomes a toxic like it's like two monkeys throwing each other's shit at each other dude that's that's what it looks like and it just it starts making everyone look silly and like it's so hard to subscribe to yeah yeah um but yeah, trust me. I mean, here in the states, we just went through Trump and like all that stuff. And like, dude, there's still people outside with Trump posters, and it's like, dude, it's over. Yeah, like, yeah. You love your country so much. Find out a way to fix it right now instead of being like, I didn't get the guy I wanted. You know, it's yeah, it's so fucking ridiculous. And it always reminds me of uh, that. I don't know. It always reminds me of that four-year-old kid in a supermarket that's just being told that he can't have a lolly. 
So they throw themselves on the ground yeah. and start, yeah. <laughs> Whenever I read literally one of those, that. it's... Literally that. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about the crazy That's world... Bad, dude. Yeah. Talking about the crazy world that we're in at the moment, how difficult was it for you guys to actually record this album? Because I know for a lot of bands, it was hard to get into a studio and things like that because of lockdowns. Yeah, I mean, I'm thankful for our experience that, uh, I mean, John runs a studio out of, you know, he has a, a nice big house it's where he has the whole basement area as a giant studio. So it's not like we're going onto a public premise, we're not going into whatever, but like, and I'm also thankful that where I live, I'm, I'm from New York, uh, Wes is in Georgia, um, I think that these states have been pretty, like, the population in Georgia was never, they were never really concerned about the virus to begin with. I, whenever I went there, bars were open. People didn't really wear masks. They wore it to get through the front door, and then they'd take it off and once they were inside. My brain didn't know how to comprehend that. I wore my mask all the time when I was down there. But coming from New York, I think we were pretty proactive in terms of, like, dealing with the, the precautions and, you know, you know, keep a little thing of sanitizer on you, keep a mask on, and you shouldn't have any trouble, you know? Yeah. And New York kind of did really well with that that our airports were like packed and, and cruising like i i did i flew f three or four times down there okay. just to get everything sol solid and done and for the music videos and and yeah no bump no no road bumps so I'm, I'm thankful for the experience yeah that i was put in and that i'm thankful no one's in different countries and there's border lockdowns and there's all this other shit you know yeah yeah but we made it happen with things like border lockdowns, where is that looking now for you guys? Like, are you going to be able to get out and do a few shows to, to promote the album coming out? Uh, I mean, I hope so. Uh, you know, I just, there, there is things that are booked, but I just want to make sure they come to, you know, to light. Um, yeah. I know the states are doing well. I think there's, like, for the instance of, uh, there's different festivals that are in, like, you know, different states out here. I think there's one in, um, I forgot the name of it already. There's like a bunch of metal fests. There's a bunch of big, like Limp Biscuit is on like three of these festivals, and I don't know the names of them right now. But um, I keep seeing it pop up on Instagram. But it, like they're big festivals that are going to have a lot of people, and a lot of states are starting to let down the mask mandate because their vaccination rates are high. So it's like, you know, we got it. We all the only way we're going to find out is if we try, right? And um, for like the UK is having Bloodstock Fest, and um, all these other countries are having these big festivals but it's a matter of hoping they stay open yeah like exactly I know what germany a few maybe a few months ago had like a big resurgence they were like ahead of us in terms of counts and then all of a sudden there's just big wave of fucking everybody getting sick yeah so who yeah. knows? I, all i can do is hope for the best so i, I don't want to jinx nothing i don't want to over hope but if, if there's no tours there'll just be more music if there's you know, tour's ready to go, you'll, you'll just see us out on the road. You know, keep buying the album. We're going to go wherever we're able to. Exactly, know? yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Everything just changes at the moment. Like, two weeks ago here in Victoria, we were having live shows, we were going to shows again, and now we find ourselves in a seven-day lockdown because we've had one little outbreak that's happened that started to spread very quickly. So things just change so quickly at the moment. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, dude. It's very much uh, an unpredictable game right now. Um, we just really want it to happen, but in saying that, all we can do is hope. That's all we can do. I, I you know, I got my vacation. I know some of the other guys did too, um, but, you know, time will tell we'll, where, where we end up. I just, I'm, I'm trying to stage dive, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go into a yep. crowd surf and, and not worry about getting sick for the next few weeks, you know? Exactly. Well, mate, we are so looking forward to that as well. And I guess to wrap up, I'd like to ask, is there anything you want to say to our listeners out there before they go out and grab a copy of this great album? Yeah. Uh, I mean, dude, please do it. Uh, check us out, allu alluvialofficial.com. We got some t-shirt designs up there. Um, you know, we still got the vinyls available up there. Uh, the one thing that I'm getting ready to do tonight is I stream on Twitch and I be I, I'm going to be live at eight o'clock today. I know this is probably going to be sent somewhere else at another time, but in the future, um, live streams, concerts, uh, behind the behind the scenes, backstage, green room, on the bus footage of all that fun stuff is going to be live on my stream at twitchtv slash Uh Follow me on the socials on Instagram, Kev Muller, and you'll be able to catch all the fun stuff behind the scenes and. We having some fun. I'm gonna be doing what you're doing. Essentially, I got like podcast things lined up, goofing around, and you know, just bringing some tour buddies on the show. You know, 
awesome. That is going to be absolutely fantastic. fantastic. That'll be fantastic to take a listen to. I'm going to add you myself right now. So thank you so much for that, Kevin. And again, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It has been a pleasure and congratulations on a fantastic album. Thank you so much, man. Pleasure's all mine. Not a problem. I'll let you go. Stay safe. And hopefully we get to see you guys in Australia sometime in the future. That'd be my dream. That's like one of the only places I haven't been yet. So it's definitely on the map. Awesome, mate. I'll let you go, but we'll talk soon. All right. Take care, buddy. See you, mate. Bye.